you can just leave it at the normal scale, but other people on their go to meetings can zoom in on it to get a little bit closer to like a full screen. Okay, <clears throat> so here's an uh, overview of the project areas, um, the Yakima River Basin, and then with, within the Yakima River Basin, uh, Tainum Creek Basin. Um, again, the project proposals are uh, Tainum Creek Rehabilitation and Recreation Management, indicated by the yellow stars, and then the Tainum Creek Campground Restoration Design, indicated by the blue star. Uh, current or, uh, Historic fish use, um, spawning and rearing, species and then rearing only species. Uh, I highlighted bull trout in pink because uh, they are not currently present. The rest of the one of them in white are, are present in Tatum Creek. <clears throat> um, like many places um, and things that this group is well aware of is habitat, habitat degradation has occurred in the Tatum drainage, uh, timber, harvest, uh, grazing, and then uh, recreation has some impacts still to this day. Um, past uh, salmonid issues were access to the creek. Um, a lot of these, or not a lot, but uh, several of these have been addressed. Uh, here's an overview of uh, other projects that have come in completed in Tainum Creek um, and how they align kind of with the current projects we're proposing. Okay, and then now moving into the project proposals themselves or, and how they fit into the recovery plan and tag focus projects. Uh, so the Yakima Steelhead Recovery Plan puts an emphasis on Tainum Creek under action item number 14. And then the Yakima Bull Trout Recovery Plan and bull trout are proposed for outplanting in 2022 in Tainum Creek. <laughs> Again, um, technical advisory group, uh, Tainum was a, a focused watershed. So the design and stream restoration of the Tainum Creek campground. Uh, some issues here, uh, disconnected floodplains, uh, confined between the road and the campground, uh, lack of complexity, and then high stream power uh, during peak flows. Um, there wasn't a, a a group, a TAM campground group uh, of a lot of collaborators put together to come up with this alternative through an alternatives analysis. Um, there's nothing new in this design. This is a lot of the same stuff that you guys saw last year. Uh, rerouting the main road to the toe of the slope to allow for a uh, floodplain to be re-engaged through here. Removal of the old road uh, to open up that floodplain, filling in the channel in some places, uh, creating a secondary channel, uh, adding wood structures and um, some structures that would help armor the existing road so that the, the creek would not continue to uh, erode at the uh, roadbed. The blue line is a proposed new access route to the campground. Um, I actually met with the Forest Service engineers out there yesterday and we spent some time walking this area and GPS, uh, developing a GPS track of an ideal road route. Um, there seems to be some traction with the Forest Service to really move this project forward. And I was excited that we actually got out and got to do something before uh, this tag presentation. <clears throat> so here's some of the collaborators uh, with the technical team. And then, uh, we went through these goals to accomplish basically a, a preferred alternative. And then, uh, you know, Ryan did a lot of modeling uh, to kind of come up with these alternatives and see which one would have a lot of uh, the best benefit uh, without the biggest impact to recreation and road infrastructure. <clears throat> Here's the existing model velocity uh, and note that this is at a hundred year event. <clears throat> uh, I know I've gone through some of this stuff pretty fast, but 
Uh, I'm sure that you guys may have some recollection of this from last year. And I wanna make sure that I can squeeze both presentations in without holding anybody else up. Um, so again, some things that I just talked about, removing floodplain impediments, uh, installing the barbs along the road, <clears throat> remove the footbridge, remove the current ford that uh, gains access to the campground, uh, construct a high flow channel, uh, you convert the campground into a day use slash group site, <clears throat> and then add fill with wood to the channel uh, to increase habitat complexity. So here's a proposed condition model uh, on the left is 100 year peak velocities. On the right, uh, again, is the, I think he may have labeled, labeled these wrong, but uh, 100 year velocity as well. I guess it's just zoomed in so you could get a better indication of where the velocity would occur uh, with our changes. And then uh, the budget, I didn't do the math quickly, um, but with current uh, increased prices, I think there was a change of roughly $11,000 over what we asked for last year. And then uh, do we have questions on this portion of the presentation? Uh, Brandon, Bob in UA asked whether the project will increase or decrease public access in camp space. Um, Bob, I, I think for the campground, the intent is to maintain public access and camp space. Um, Does that sound good to you, Brandon? Yeah, except after my discussion with the engineers yesterday, they said that this road, that the new road they want to put, it has to be a uh, it's level three, which is passenger car. And I, I've never tried it, but I don't imagine a passenger car would make it across the current Ford very well. Hmm. I have a feeling it may actually have a slight increase in recreation. Um, Deb Davis was there yesterday, um, and she said that this particular campground has a, a fairly low use rate. Um, but having a, a road that makes it more accessible for people to haul tents and stuff in, rather than having to cross the bridge if you can't get your car through the Ford, uh, we may we may see a small increase. John has a question. It looks like the new channel will be through the campground and not the floodplain. Is that correct? Um, I'm assuming that we're talking about oops, the new uh, like secondary high flow channel. Um, and if that's the case, then it is going to cut off some of the campground. Um, and this this part, I don't know if you guys can see my cursor, but this part of the campground where my cursor is, is all fairly low uh, floodplain. And this is just a proposed route. Um, this, we don't, you know, we don't have to stick to this exact route. Um, there is some very low ground through here that I was noticing yesterday where uh, with very minimal excavation, we could actually get a secondary channel that flows through what appears to be an old secondary channel in this area. Um, but the majority of the campground, so there's all these camping spaces through here, there's the vault toilets, the CCC shelter, and then all the uh, camp spaces beyond the CC shelter would still remain. Um, and then like I said, this, this isn't like the exact route of the secondary channel, um, and it could be altered some uh, to retain more of the camping spaces if necessary. Yeah, I guess my confusion on that was I thought it was described as we have a campground in the floodplain, and it looks here from the modeling like the campground is too high to actually even be in the 100 year floodplain. So we, this, I guess that's confusing to me. That's, that's, doesn't seem very common to cut a channel into a, you know, kind of a, it seems like it's more of a bench or something. So can you guys see my cursor? Yes. So right down here by this footbridge, there are there are existing campsites down here. And these are the campsites that we'd like to get basically 
move to higher ground or uh, remove those sites. And then I think that the the high flow channel was a theory that Ryan proposed because it would help reduce velocity coming at this road. So during high flow events, we'd get more water coming down the channel, which reduces the velocity and the, the possibility of erosion on this road here. Alex says the proposed condition shows no channel in the upper half, stage zero, just post construction. Have you modeled flood extents, how flood extends after channels develop? Uh, repeat that. Uh, the pre the proposed condition shows no channel in the upper half, stage zero, just post construction. Have you modeled flood how uh, floods extend after new channels develop? Um, I think that the I think that the proposed conditions are with filling the channel, um, and this is what it would look like after. Obviously, the road is removed and the channel is filled in. Does that, does that answer what you were asking? Um, I was thinking typically in stage zero, you would expect some channel development, maybe not in a totally known location after the project. So you fill it in, but if you came back after flood activity, you'd find developed channels, maybe multiple channels. And as those channels develop, I assume the flood extent would contract again, and some velocity would contract in the channels. Am I reading it right, or are you thinking this would set, stay as what I think of as a, a soggy bottom where water just spreads over the entire bottom without channelizing at all? Okay, I, I guess I better understand your question now. Um, I think it's hard to predict that. So I don't know that we could do any modeling until we actually started to see some channel forming. Um, so I don't think there's, I, unless Ryan's aware of a, a method, he's much better at this modeling than I am. And I can always ask him and have further clarification on that if you would like. Thank you. At this point, we should probably move on to the other one, the bit of time that we have left. And okay. I apologize, we don't have more time. Uh, so we're going to move on to the uh, Tainum Creek R&R &R for short. Uh, so there's three dispersed sites um, on U.S. Uh, Forest Service. I think this is like, a, it's right on the border. There's a little bit on Forest Service, a little bit on DNR, on DNR property and Fish and Wildlife property. Uh, so here's an example of the recreation site use. Um, it's highly degraded, browned out area that is in um, traditional floodplain along Tatum Creek. Um, so one of the new developments is that when I was up there uh, a couple weeks ago taking pictures, uh, this site has now been closed. Oh, too far. This site has now been closed. Um, these boulders have been put across the, all the access routes. Um, and this, this is signs everywhere that says it's no longer open for camping. Um, so they've already decided to close it to camping. Um, so by us coming in and doing restoration work, uh, there would no longer be any impact to recreation like there was last year. Uh, again, some of the problems we've seen, um, abandoned campers, um, lots of camping, again, browned out area in, uh, stream adjacent and or old floodplain areas. Um, lots of garbage um, that oftentimes gets pulled into the stream during high flow events and or just thrown in the stream uh, when campers are done camping in that area. <clears throat> I'm going to cruise through the fisheries issues. Um, obviously you can see large large boulders, not a lot of gravels and smaller cobble for spawning. Uh, sedimentation issues near some of these where you can see people have dug into it um, and are creating excessive runoff or excessive sediment issues. And of course, rock damming uh, to create pools and someone even went as far as to bring a slide in so they could make their own water slide. Uh, so restoration approach for these would be to remove floodplain impediments. 
<clears throat> increase channel bed elevations, initiate side, side channel activation, rehabilitate impacted floodplain services, and exclude, well, I forgot to take that from last year. Sorry about that. These sites have been mostly excluded. Um, and we do that through uh, flow deflectors and splitting structures. Um, you guys have probably seen a lot of these over the years. So the one on the left um, is a nice deflector. And then we got a nice aerial view of some deflectors and splitters. Uh, so site specific, this would be site one on Fish and Wildlife. This site um, has also received fencing. Uh, so there's new a new buck and rail fence approximately where my cursor is and a new smooth wire fence that isolates the rest of this, um, leaving this road open for people to come in, but isolating them from getting out into a uh, floodplain area. And you can see with a uh, relative elevation map, there's some areas that uh, are impeding the floodplain. Um, and we'd require grading is all and decompaction to bring them down so that we could get reactivated floodplain. Um, hydraulic modeling, um, showing a 9% increase at a two year return and a 67% increase uh, at 100 year returns. And then going to site two, this is where the, the shared, oh, it's uh, Fish and Wildlife, sorry, not Forest Service. Uh, this one is under shared ownership. No in-stream work at this site because there is a bridge downstream um, and we wanted to reduce overall cost and not have to do uh, full engineering on this one. So decompact and roughen the floodplain. This area is the only area that is still open to public use currently, or 100% or open to public use. Um, and this would be one that we would like to decompact, roughen, and then potentially exclude from recreation. And then this is site three. This is the one that had the rocks, the rock boulders put across the entrance. Um, and this is by far the, the biggest uh, ecological lift in this project. So again, we have some relative elevation mapping and Ryan highlighted the side channels for us to show the potential for uh, re-engaging side channels and floodplain. And uh, placement of log jams based on the potential to reopen side channels or, or engage by, uh, side channels during high flow events. And then here's the hydraulics for this site, 20% uh, initial increase at a two year return, and then 20% uh, initial increase at a hundred year. I'm realizing that they both say 20, I wonder if that's a typo, sorry. Uh, what to say, we'll have to kind of cruise through it in about 30 seconds here and move on to the next presentation. Okay, so, um, Budget, uh, total ask is 350,956. I think this represents about a $60,000 increase over last year. Questions? Yeah, maybe we'll take questions by email. Okay. Thank um, you, Brandon. I can stop presenting and, well, I guess if I try to answer questions in chat, that's distract distracting, so. Yeah, any questions I can get to you from uh, from the committee members. And again, I'm sorry that it got rushed.